Good morning. It's mm -hmm. Together in Marriage Tuesday. Together in Marriage Tuesday. Together in Marriage Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. I am Pastor is, Nick. And I'm Pastor Frank. We are here today bringing you our live broadcast talking about Together in Marriage. Uh, when two becomes one was a course we did a long time ago. Anyway, amazing things happen. When two becomes one, amazing, amazing things, things happen. So we're here today to help you and talk about your marriages, help with marriages, provide insight into how to have a healthy and prosperous marriage. And we're thankful uh, that you've joined us. Let's give some shout outs uh, to Annie. Uh, good morning to Lakeisha. Good morning. Desiree. Good morning. Cousin Faye. Good morning to you. Brenda Jackson. Our Brenda uh, Ferrandes, good morning to you. Paula, good morning to you, young lady. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to uh, Rita, good morning to you. Carmen, good morning to you. Kansas, good morning to you. Valerie, good morning to you. Karen, to the full, uh, good, good evening to you. Uh, Yalitza, good morning to you. Cynthia, good morning to you. Jerry, Jerry, good morning to you. Tifa, good morning to you. Karen, good morning to you. Harry, good morning to you. There's my sister. Good morning, Mary Jo. God bless you. Good morning, uh, Shanika, good morning. Uh, Jeremiah, good morning. Natifa, good morning. John, good morning. James, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to pray and get right in the word, man. I got, uh, you know, we have a, a message uh, from God for our married couples today. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, I read something Pastor Terry put on. And he thought that was kind of funny. You know, I believe you can learn and glean things uh, from everybody in every situation. However, I do believe there are people like my wife and I, we've been married for 37 years. And I think there's something to say about that. And I think the minute that you think that you know everything is the minute that you don't. So continue to always strive to learn more. And I always try to learn, uh, for me anyway, I guess because I'm a leader, I try to learn from people that have been there, done that. I don't need trials and errors. Amen. So let's pray again in the word. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for everyone that's present this morning, Lord, seeking you this morning. Father, I just thank you, Father, for every marriage this morning. I thank you, Father, for great intimacy yes. in marriage, great sex in marriage, Lord, because yeah. it was designed and ordained by you. Yes. And I just thank you, Father, for the marriage and, and all that comes with it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's another good point right there. We're talking about sex and marriage. So you're talking about two people who have been faithful to each other for 37 years. If you think it's just a simple thing to be faithful to one person for 37 years, it's really not. It can be, but it's really not for some people because they like variety. They like different things. They, they have lust issues. They have other challenges outside of their marriage that has nothing to do with you. Like, for instance, most people think when somebody cheats in a marriage, mm -hmm. it's because of the other person. Like the woman don't look good enough or she's not good enough in bed or, or she don't do this right. And, and it's not. It's just your your husband is a boy and he doesn't he hasn't become a man yet. Right. And he doesn't understand um, the real importance of intimacy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's about my or vice versa. If you have a woman that cheats, you know, because today it's not like it used to be uh, back in the day. Men were the cheaters today. It's you know, it, it, it's right up there. So anyway, let's recap real quick. Um, in the first week, we talked about uh, the husband's need to strive for sexual purity. Uh, and that was a big part of that uh, whole intimacy in the bedroom. You know, if you're looking at pornography, men, if you're, you know, looking at other women, if you're, I, again, you know, I'm not telling you you're never going to look at another woman. I hate for you to think that that's what I'm saying, who I am. But what I am saying is I learned something from Dr. Copeland a long time ago, uh, Brother Copeland. He said, birds are going to fly over your head, but don't let them make a nest in your hair. Um, happen to see a woman walking by or noticing a woman and fixating yourself and looking at a woman and fantasizing about a woman. Th those are two totally different things. Uh, and if you're doing the latter, uh, you really need to, to, to learn to learn and go back and watch the first video where I talk about having eyes for your wife only. You need to learn to have eyes for your wife only. And the way that you learn real briefly to have eyes for your wife only, you need to start talking about your wife. You need to start, start whatever it is about your wife that you love. And there's something about her you love. But Patsy, you know, she don't look like, I married my wife when she was in high school. 
She does not look like she looked when she was in high school physically. Okay, she actually looks better. <laughs> right, right. See, that's, that's the point, point, guys. You have you have to you you can't look at what she doesn't have that she had back then. You have to look at what she has today, right? Uh, and, and what she is today. Why is she? Well, why? How can you say she looks better, Pastor? She's gotten older. She's had four children. Because I've changed my view of my wife. I, I, I look at her for the total love and commitment she has to me and our family and, and our relationship, right? And I look at how beautiful she is inside and out, although she's beautiful still outside too, right? And you can find things. That's a very important point. A lot of times we forget about inner beauty and it is the greater right. of the two. Right. Because um, I don't care what no one says, it's hard. A man can be lustful, but it's hard for a man to leave a good Christian woman. Right. Someone's been there. Someone's been committed. Someone's shown love, unconditional love. Right. It is hard. Right. Right. Just so that, that that was number one. We talked about that two weeks ago. And then last week, uh, we talked about husbands must understand and respect their wives' need for emotional sex before having physical sex. Husbands must understand and respect, understand and respect their emo the wife's emotional needs, right? So it's not just about the physical sex, right? It's the cuddling, it's the laying in the bed, it's the, you know, all those That's things. And, and again, like I told you, we are not gonna get into, in this series, they were, we're not gonna get into sexual positions and how many times a week you should be having sex and, and, and you know, should she do this and should, we're not getting into that. We're talking about how we need to fulfill each other as a Christian man and woman. And I, I really want to put emphasis on actions. Actions. Not right. so much always talking, because we know when it's genuine and when it's not. But when you really help us, right. when you're concerned about us, right. that's you. Well, and that was number three, right? Husbands need to increase their quality time, their emotional closeness, and their non-sexual touch. Their quality time, the emo their emotional closeness, and their non-sexual touch. Now we hit a lot on the first uh, couple of weeks of this with the men. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the women. Uh, and I want to read something to you ladies. Uh, and it's really going to challenge some of y'all because we're in a real uh, tough time in our country right now. Uh, you have this, uh, what I believe is a demonic message on equality being taught. I don't believe it's of God. I just don't. Um, I think we're all created equal. I think that the man and the woman are absolutely mankind. I think God created us equal, but I think in the marriage, God created a head of the marriage. Uh, and there, and there are inherent things that man, that God created man to do that when a woman does, uh, she steps out of her place. And there are things that God created a woman to do that when a man tries to do, he steps out of his place and then things get off kilter. I'm reading this book right now. It's called, uh, better dads, stronger sons. And I want to read something to you that, that this gentleman says. I really find it pretty remarkable. He says, a man is created for challenges. A man is created for challenges. He is equipped to overcome, to run the gauntlet, to stand firm as a well-anchored center post. Men are the benchmark in life, society, and family. Now, I know some of you women are getting offended right now. He says it is the it is part of masculinity, masculine responsibility. It is part of masculine responsibility to demonstrate strength, stability, and to protect and provide for those within their sphere of influence. This is the hallmark of manhood. This is the hallmark of manhood. A man, it is part of the masculine responsibility to demonstrate strength and stability, to protect and to provide for those within their sphere of influence. This is the hallmark of manhood. Now, when we take and we try to switch roles, women begin to do what God didn't call them to do, and men begin to do what God didn't call him to do, and we get out of balance. We need to understand that God has created us specifically. I don't care what today's society says. I don't care, you know, what 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 anybody says. God, we're talking about the Bible now, 
created us. Yes, he created us. We're all equal. A woman can do anything she wants to do. A woman can do a lot of things better than a man. But there are things in the marriage that a man is designed by God to do. And there are things in the marriage a woman is designed by God to do. I don't care how much you want a man to stay home and raise the kid because you make more money. A woman was created by God to be that child's nurturer. And a man was created by God to be that child's provider. And when we start getting these things out of balance, it causes all kind of other issues in the marriage. This is why you don't see good sexual uh, relations in marriages today. Because everybody's not getting what they need. Right. Um, man needs to be respected, revered, honored, just needs to be. Right. And when we, women, need to, be, need, women need to be adored. Right. Women need to cherished. be cherished. Love. Love. Like we're the only one right. that you that you see. Right. Um, but when you go to go and you switch these roles, you can't be that to me. Right. If you home watching a child, right, and people just are, you just can't. How are you gonna feel respected? Right. And I'm leaving you a chore list, and the door is hitting my back. It, right. it just makes. Right. Work. And people will tell sometimes when we talk about this um, that well, that's your opinion. No, this is what the Bible says. It's not our opinion. Now, other people can choose to live outside of the way. God has ordained them to live. That's okay. That's their choice. And, and I understand that. And I'm not arguing that point. I'm talking to people that are Christians. They want to have a Christian marriage. They want to be married together in one with Christ. Too love to yeah. It's just like going to the courthouse and getting a license. You go to the courthouse and get a license. You have a covenant of marriage, a covenant of you of a covenant of a union with the United States of America. You don't have a marriage. You can only have a marriage when you have a marriage license from the United States of America, and then you come before an ordained minister of God, before the Father and the Holy Spirit, and you pronounce and take your vows before a man of God. That's the only way it can be a marriage, because that's the only way it can be consummated and, and sealed by God. So see, we, 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 don't, we get in these things and we don't understand it. Well, pastor, I never got married in the church. I didn't hear say you had to get married in the church. Get a man of God to marry you, and it will be done. That It's that simple. So, And women really don't understand the power that we have. We have so much power. We have power in our sexuality. Right. We have power um, in, our, in our being. In your encouragement. In, right. in our conduct, in, right. our, in our conversation, there's right. power right. when we do it God's way. Right. There's a power there. You know, I tell people all the time I was a fighter. You know, and I couldn't have done what I did in fighting if I didn't have a great corner man, if I didn't have a great coach, if I didn't have a great guy in my corner encouraging me, warning me, telling me, lifting me up, right? It's the same in business. I had great mentors, people that poured into my life that made the difference. You don't always have to be the one out front. That's another thing. A lot of this is born in selfishness. So anyway, let's get back to sexuality. So today we're talking about the women. Uh, and let's finish in this one. So number four is wives need to embrace their sexuality. Wives need to embrace their sexuality. Um, we dealt with this a lot with my wife. She was raised a, a, a Baptist preacher's daughter. She was the baby. She had to be a virgin. She had to be all those things. And she was. But the point was, when we got married, my wife viewed sex as dirty. She viewed sex as not a... A good thing, right? You want to talk about that a little bit? All right. And you're right. It's because of where I was trained, where right. I was raised. I right. mean, sex is it, it was it was a sin, basically. Right. right. But it was hard to switch the role. I was like, okay, I'm married now. I got my walking papers. Right. But still, I view sex as being dirty. Right. And sex, and, and you should do certain things, and 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 you're in the marriage. Right. And I had to learn that. And it took years. It really did. It took years right. for me to progress little by little to know, you know what? This is good. It's beautiful. I'm free. I can do this. Right. Uh, in Psalms chapter 4, verse 16, it says, May, uh, may my, my beloved come into his garden and eat its choice fruits. So in the Bible, there, there are areas in the Bible where it talks about sex and intimacy between two married people being a beautiful thing, being a good thing, right? Now, if you got a husband that's trying to turn your bedroom into, into a porn movie, 
you know, you need to have a talk with them. You need to talk to them. But do understand that 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 you also, I'm not going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. We said we're not going to get into the bedroom. But understand the intimacy between two married people is about the desire to please one another. If you keep that at the forefront of your thinking, it's the desire to please one another. Not that, that I'm going to just give you this example. We, we had a person ask this one time in marriage counseling. Um, if I don't like doing X to my husband, but he wants me to do X, is it godly? This is what they, they ask me, right? Well, first of all, is it or isn't godly? Is it the point? The point is this. Let me get to the root of the problem. She should want to please her husband and her husband should want to please her. So the truth is, if she really don't want to do that, whatever that is, he shouldn't want her to do it. And the truth is, if she wants him to do that, he should, she should do it, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes back and forth because when you make it about satisfying and pleasing each other, you kind of walk through all the law, if you will, sense. It kind of automatically happens. Right, right. It automatically happens. And again, there are things that are out of bounds. And if you're having challenges with that, I suggest you seek a sex counselor. They, they do have those out there. That's not what my wife and I do. But I suggest you seek one because there are people out there today that are really engulfed in pornography. And pornography is really oh. greatly damaged. Uh, the bedroom. Yes, yes. Um, so, so that's going on. But wives need to understand, and this is the one for today, and we'll end here. Wives need to understand and embrace their sexuality. I think this used to be a problem. I don't think it's a problem as much no more. No. Definitely not in the world, but in Christians, Christian. especially Christian wives, Christian. sometimes they may, may feel there are certain things that are dirty or not of God or oh, I wow. shouldn't be doing or they're wrong. Remember, the point is we need to want to please each other, please each other. Again, if you can't get to the place where that makes sense to you or whatever, you that's okay, but you need to talk to him and you need to hear his heart and y'all need to have real discussions about sex. You need to learn to talk about what makes you feel good, what makes him feel good, what is desirable to each other. Are there things that one or another does that during sex or or, or during intimacy uh, that, that you don't like, you know, and my don't wife, get offended. right. And don't get it like my wife and I with the phones now, right. We're out and I'm on the phone. I'm talking to people. I'm communicating. That's intimacy. No, you can't do that. Leave your phone in the car. When we go to dinner, we're going to sit down together. You're going to pay attention to me. You're going to focus on me. It's only going to be about me, you know, going live, taking pictures. My wife don't want her life posted all over Facebook sometimes. Right. That she wants, there's intimate things she wants between us, right? So we need to learn to respect one another in marriage. We need to learn to respect one another in sex, and sex will be better. Next week, uh, when you guys join us, we're going to talk about the wives' need to re realize sex in a Christian marriage is one of the most powerful ways to bless their marriage. Amen. Next week, we're going to talk about wives' need to realize that sex in a Christian marriage is one of the most powerful ways to bless a marriage. We love you, we love you, we love you. Until tomorrow, Pastor Nick, saying enjoy life.